Mayor. We got Mayor Hoffman on to sit on you, Mayor. This is your Mayor Sin City. He's also the Vice President of the Mayor's Council, and he's also on the Homeless Interagency. And he's also uh, successfully uh, been elected another term because he no one's running against him wow. again. Yeah. <laughs> so good job. Good morning, Thank Mayor. You. Good morning. I guess first awesome. of all, good let's uh, good. We're okay. What would, what do you think of the protest? Um, I wish it didn't have to happen, and mm -hmm. I, I'm, it's hard, you know, when you you, ha you have a lot of people. I mean, I've met. We're doing food distribution yesterday uh, with the fruits and the meats that came in from the USDA, and everybody we meet has a story, and they're struggling, and mm -hmm. you know, they they just want people to. Ask, everybody just hunkers down for a while, flatten that curve, and I was saying that last night. We haven't heard that whole flatten the curve campaign since the beginning side of it. it kind of went by the wayside, and I think everybody needs to do their part to lower this because I understand the healthcare professionals' mm -hmm. concerns. We understand uh, the business owners' concerns. We understand all these concerns everywhere. And, uh, and just to meet those hundreds of people yesterday, one by one, in their car, they didn't get out. We brought the food into their car, the trunk. Uh, you know, we had contactless uh, distribution. It, you know, it really just shows that, you know, these were people from all different walks of life. So uh, we had, you know, even people who own businesses came and got their, you know, their food and their share. So uh, they all, they also want to, they, they, they agree with the lockdown right now and they'll do whatever it takes. You know, they, they have this compassion for other people. They have concern for other people than themselves. And I think that's the, the Christian thing to do. That's the right thing to do. And that's, that's pretty much our island way of life. We're supposed to be about an Afamalik and helping each other. And it's not, a, it's, we've, we've never been about the me. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so with this, this protest, we'll just go back to this. What did you make of this uh, sentiment where it was like, let the virus run its course and the house arrest? Because I wasn't sure what the messaging was a little confusing for me. I mean, do they want to just, some of them do just want to reopen everything a thousand million percent. But we've seen that in, in on those other areas where they've done that, and we've seen what happens. So I'm not sure why, I mean, if if we're saying, you know, follow the science or follow this, we've seen what happens. And mm -hmm. does it make any sense to stay, to, to re, just let the virus run its course and sacrifice people here and there? I, I've seen stories about people in Sweden where their families are pissed off because, you know, why did their loved one have to be the sacrificial lamb mm. to kind of get this uh, group testing or whichever else like that? And I don't think anybody wants that to happen. Nobody wants the death. And people are saying, oh, but it's survivable. But, you know, if you look at the dashboard yesterday, did you see the dashboard when they released the results yesterday? It's Dedito has the most cases, mm -hmm. over 200. And then the next village is Santa Rita, but that counts for the Navy base. And it makes me wonder what's going on in the Navy base with so many cases. You know, I could say maybe they're tested at Naval Hospital, but they could be from anywhere else. But the fact is, if you look at the Santa Rita area where the Navy base is, it shows that there are over 100 cases, active cases there. So what's going on in that side of the island that, you know, they're not doing, you know, is it, you know, and that they're pretty much free in, right. to do what they please in the Navy <laughs> side. So they're golfing. Uh, there is concern. There is. Yeah, there is evidence there. So, mm -hmm. well, just for know, our it's, listeners, it's we are we are um, securing that in interview with Admiral Minoni. Right. Uh, it looks like we're we're going to have him on on Friday, so we can ask him more questions. And if you have questions, please post it. Right. Yeah, but don't like give out the questions because <laughs> we want him to come on. <laughs> no, I mean yeah. he's he's you know when I asked, he seemed more than willing to to come on. I think he understands there's so questions uh, that everybody in the community has. Right. So just hang on to those yeah. questions for another couple of days. I mean, we try. We try to get them on, you know, the day of. But obviously, busy guys an understatement. Uh, Mayor, so uh, we'll just catch up now on the Homeless Interagency Task Force, if you want to put on that hat. I know that we tested the homeless out of a uh, global uh, dorm. What's the status on that? So from what I understand yesterday, uh, speaking generally, the results were all negative. But in order to, for them to call each of the people who took the test, a lot of the homeless don't have phones right. and don't have service or stuff. And that became a barrier. And that's something we also realized saying, you know, how do we do that? How do we test people? And sometimes people especially are very uh, leery of answering numbers they don't know. Mm -hmm. I get that all the time as a mayor. Is this legit? Is this a scam? Is this <laughs> about my computer operating system? You know, is this going to be a different person on the other end of this? So 
it, it, that became a challenge. So when we ended up kind of finding out and doing the research, I want to thank you actually for asking me this because I posed a question to the group. I said, where are we at this? And then the contact group came back saying, you know, we've been trying, but they either don't have minutes or they don't have cell phone capability. So what we did is we were able to get the shelter manager to get them to sign waivers and releases so they can get the information for that person. And they came back and said, you know, you're negative here and, and there. So I, we understood the challenges that are there. And uh, it kind of moving forward when we do the street homeless testing, that would be something we're going to need to yeah. put into place already so we can find them and let them know their status. Right. That that includes the staff, right, that, that are negative? Yes, okay. that includes the staff, okay. yeah. And when do you plan on starting right the now we're... street homeless testing? Um, it's, well... We've put in the request to public health. I know they're actively trying to chase after all those that uh, currently have COVID and doing the contact tracing and spreading that out and trying to see where they've been. I know they've been, you know, but, you know, GPD and all those other places, those schools. And, you know, that's the, the hard part is, is these areas or these employees of these schools and they come into contact with, you know, 50, 60 people in a day, you know, like Chris was saying, this is Guam. There's no, uh, mm -hmm. by yourself. We all <laughs> go in a lounge room or we right. eat together or we, you know, if you're by yourself, we're going to, we're going to come check on you, unfortunately for COVID. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, it, you know, these are the, so I, I think they're trying their best on that and, uh, to kind of catch up where it is. So I understand, uh, the governor's in a very hard predicament having to, you get advice from the physicians group, you get advice from people with the economy or trying to deal with your own uh, cabinet and your own friends and family yeah, and trying yeah. to just really balance that out. The life Which, she chose though. One group. Yeah. I, yes. And I, it's never just one group that gives you that. And I think that's the, the sign of, you know, you're listening to everybody kind of get, uh, you're trying to absorb as much information here and there. And, uh, you know, it, there, there's the science behind it. There's the cultural side of it. There's, you know, I, I, I know it hard, it's hard for her. It's hard to, I mean, she's closing, you know, to, to close down things that, people got used to opening during P core three. And, you know, my, can, my wonder is, is are we going to go from P core one to two to three? Or are we going to go from one to three or? Yeah. Let's you know, talk about that. It, man. It, it, um, with the, with the lockdown, uh, you know, supposedly ending this Friday, but doesn't look like it. Have the mayor's been contacted at all or folded into any conversation on a possible extension of this uh, current P core one lockdown? Uh, no, uh, last night we kind of, after we saw the results, we kind of just sent that in our, as you know, what, what's, what does it look like? And I guess they're going to have that discussion, uh, and, and see and, and weigh, because I mean, if these results are coming out from previous, the last 10 days worth of testing, and it's not really showing now what, you know, what can we do? And a lot of those people who probably do have COVID, I under, like I said, we understand the hospital's concerns. So I, I take the lead from the hospitals and I probably... I think maybe today they should probably, if I, if I was in that group, I would probably say start finding a way to shore up the tent hospital and everything else just to be sure, uh, just to be safe. Because, I, you know, like you said, you don't want to be in the elevator or be the unlucky. You don't want to be patient number 16. If they only have 15 <laughs> ventilators, you want to be patient number 16. You're like about to bust so, off futons. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that's, you know, it's, it's a hard decision. And mm -hmm. for us mayors, uh, we're still out there giving the food. We're still out there uh, doing what we can. And I think, I, I know we they, we sent out a press release the other day about the junk collection, the recycling mm -hmm. collection. Please don't put it out on the curb yet. Uh, we've actually stopped. Uh, the contractors who are assisting us have stopped. They've opted to follow the executive order, stay at home. So uh, we're not doing that. And we're actually not doing that right now. And we'll let the people of Guam know when the mayors are starting to ramp up those efforts. So please don't dump it don't do what they did at Wustig Road or anywhere else there uh you know we're just every asking everybody just you know just remain home and just ride this out yeah and unfortunately during uh the first wave we saw that people were still um illegal dumping yeah mm -hmm. and there's uh, it's 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 a challenge for just yeah, you saw that but then that was household trash at, mm -hmm. at, at every other place and we're still getting that and uh, hopefully people are, are being more vigilant there. And I mean, it's, being at home is a, is a good time right now to kind of uh, sign up for the other programs your mayor's offices have. Mm -hmm. Our office, we're doing Zoom, uh, we're doing Zumba via Zoom. So, so uh, it's Zumba. we're actually calling it Zumba yeah, yeah. with the o, o, o and we're doing yeah. Zumba. That's cute. And we just, you know, we re record it there at our office. And um, I mean, you know, we do it there. My 
senior citizens manager is also certified Zumba. And so we did it last <laughs> night. It was our first. He class, says, and it you're was talking about cool. Ken, right? Yes. Yeah, he got his Zumba black belt, I heard, uh, last year. Yeah. Maybe yes. one of these days we'll join you for your Zumba. Yeah, we were your, actually talking. Your talk- guest Zumba. I know, because <laughs> during the, you know, there's no individual exercise, so we kicked around the idea. Man, Mayor really just, like, over the weekend, I was like, dude, Mayor Hoffman has a guy, Ken, he's always doing the Zumbas. Let's go jump on the Zumba. But the thing we had is, like, when we start playing all that copyrighted music, it's going to kill our stream, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you we'll can't really zumba out. without music. We'll make it work. <laughs> Unless... I, 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 I want to just follow up on uh, the the. Here comes Debbie Downer. The uh, <laughs> number of confirmed COVID cases in Sinohanya. How many? How many do you guys have there? I don't believe we. I have not heard that we have any. Uh, in looking at the dashboard, we're we're one of the lightest colors in the mm-hmm. group there. So, and then in talking to my residents, they they haven't said. Uh, or, you know, like I said, normally they're very good about letting us know if, you know, because we're doing, we're interacting with them mm-hmm. and doing things. So right now, uh, they're not, uh, I, have, I haven't heard any for Sinahanya itself. So yeah. I'm, I'm proud of yeah. my residents and want to keep it that way and knock on wood, we're going to continue that. But I did ask, <laughs> and many of the villages did ask that when we do ramp up testing again, a lot of the villages did sign up. I know uh, Agate and Arahan, uh, Sinahanya, Yaganya Heights, they were like one of the first ones right out the gate asking, you know, can we get retested and stuff like this? So mm-hmm. it's a good way to kind of reassure people. But, you know, the testing is, is a snapshot in time. You could test today and get exposed tomorrow. And so that's the, the hard part. And, you know, you, it's not a it's not a virus that you can see. You know, I, I wish it could turn people a different color, like in Willy Wonka or something. So you can tell like, hey, you have the virus, but that's not the way it is. And so the people that did get it, I really feel for them and you know it's it is a struggle like we constantly talk to them who are in other villages i know some people actually have it and it's the fevers come and go the chills and they're they're miserable and you know it, it i know it has certain days i think they're on like day five day six day five to nine I, I heard is the worst and so you know many of them are in the midst of that i think tomorrow's their day nine so yeah i'm no, happy I, for them on i was able end. to pull it up yeah you guys have six active 12 cases but six are active and five or my math is so bad. Yeah. 12, 12 cases and five not in isolation. So that would mean seven are active cases. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, I know some mayor's offices actually have employees that have tested for, for COVID. And so they've had to shut down and get tested too. And it's very unfortunate because, it, you know, it's you start to wonder where you, you where you get this. And, you know, I, some people are getting mad saying, oh, I'm getting it from my work site. I said, you can't prove that. You mm-hmm. can't prove that you got it here or there. You could have gotten it at the store. You could have got it anywhere. It's it's airborne. Yeah. It's, you know, you can get it through your eyes or touching your face or, you know, a, a bunch of places. So it's hard, but uh, mm-hmm. all we got to do is, you know, be safe out there. And we're, we're trying our darndest, you know, it's, I, I would hate to say it's a matter of time before we all catch it, but at the rate the worldwide is going, South Korea is getting it back, Hong Kong and all those other places. Uh, we just got to pray for a cure. Yeah. And, and and in the meantime, wear your mask and stay home. Right on. Yes. All right, yes. Mayor. Thank well, you, Mayor. appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Stay safe out there. Yeah. Thanks for everything Thank you're you. doing. Appreciate it. Thank you for asking the update. It helped us uh, kind of prompt and figure out a solution for it. So I, I really appreciate it. So thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mayor. Take all right. Care. We'll see you. Wash your hands. So take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Stay home. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, 650. Let's keep it going in the KUAM News. Zoom.